good morning, everybody. So uh, I cranked the air down as low as we can. Uh, good stuff. Yeah, you can apply that. Yeah. There's yeah. yeah. humidity, right? Um, so if I, you know, they probably haven't governed if I still continue to melt while I'm up here. So I apologize in advance. Um, so uh, just a couple of things. I know all of you are very, very interested in both of these topics. Uh, we do have one that is more pressing than others. Um, so, you know, we, we call this the Webmaster Seminar and CRM training slash orientation or whatever we call it. Um, for those of you that might not be aware, we've recently shut down all, if not maybe one, of DAV's legacy systems uh, and combine them into one joint system where they can now talk to each other. And that's incredibly important as we go about our membership recruitment efforts, our fundraising efforts, donor relations, all that good stuff. Uh, we need to know who our constituents are and uh, how to talk to them. And this is gonna really transform how we engage in our business over the next couple of few decades. So this is really a generational transformation that we're in the midst of going through. So we truly appreciate all of your patience and support as we do this. Um, from my standpoint, I know that many of you have been interested in uh, where are the reports, the membership reports, pops on, the standings, all that good stuff. They are coming. I know I've been saying that for a minute. Uh, we just had the CNA folks at, out to headquarters, and I was promising it that it was just over the horizon at that point. Uh, you know, but uh, technology is a is a fickle, fickle dance partner, right? So, uh, you know, we're also uh, having to overcome uh, challenges of taking data, some of which was from our mainframes 35, 40 years ago and plugging it all into uh, this system. As an example of the difficulties that we're having to overcome, uh, I discovered when we did our uh, uh, data uh, conversion that, you know, once we started combining our data with fundraising, donor relations, and the other groups, that we lost 50,000 members that I didn't know had passed. Um, so that's a good thing from the standpoint of keeping our roles up to date, you know, uh, but certainly, you know, we need all that information so we can be effective moving forward. So having said all that, um, Heather Kohlmeyer is the membership department's uh, business analyst. She does a terrific job helping me analyze all the data that we have to take in and, and hopefully spit back out in an accurate manner. Uh, but one of the other things she does for us is uh, help us with our webmaster uh, responsibilities and permissions and all that good stuff. So she is posted down in registration. So um, you can set some time with her aside and, and she can get you squared away if you have access issues. The webmaster port or the uh, membership portal is our platform of choice for the next little bit of time, foreseeable future, right? Uh, our IT staff, RMO, they are uh, fully engaged in trying to get CRM uh, up to speed, uh, a couple of other programs that are coming around the corner to make sure all that stuff is integrated and talks to each other, okay? Uh, it's a very complex deal and I just, I don't want to add an additional burden to them that we don't have to, but down the road, we will be looking at getting something probably more robust than what we have for the, uh, the membership portal. So in the meantime, uh, please see Heather if you have questions or concerns about the portal. So I, you know, I'm just making a kind of a command decision here. We're gonna blow through the slides for the membership portal. We've given that same presentation a couple of times. There's valuable information on here. It'll be on, it'll be uploaded on the, uh, on DAV.org, so please feel free to go get it. Or, you know where I live, um, dwells at DAV.org, right? That's my email address, <coughs> dwells at DAV.org, and that's the number of my desk. You're happy, I'm happy to have you give me a call or shoot an email, and I can get you squared away. Um, so again, uh, just gonna go ahead and blow through this part of the agenda with your all's permission, uh, since we're gonna have Heather here as a resource until uh, next Tuesday morning. Um, but please, you know, she wants to talk to you and have those conversations and get you squared away. And then even after the fact, 
you can get a hold of her in my department at National Headquarters, okay? Um, so I want to take a minute to introduce April Rausch. Uh, April is our results management officer. She does a terrific job for us at headquarters. Her main gig, and she can correct me, she does often. Uh, she can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but uh, basically, any project that we have, she makes sure that it happens on time and on budget. She kicks our butt to make sure that that happens, right? Uh, so she has really been leading the charge for us uh, with respect to CRM. Uh, you know, she's uh, um, just a terrific employee at headquarters and she really does a great job rallying the troops and making sure that, you know, she and her staff get the information that they need from us as the business owners and from all of you as the end users uh, to make sure that we have an effective platform. So I wanted to reserve the vast majority of the time. I'm certain we're gonna have a bunch of questions. Some April will answer, some I'll answer uh, about CRM. We had hoped to have some additional training here with respect to like line officer uh, capabilities in the system, officer reports, annual financial reports for agent treasurers, that sort of thing. We're just not far enough along yet. Uh, those things are still being somewhat developed and we wanted to make sure that we're presenting you with more of a, of a finished product, okay? So that, that is just over the horizon. Again, we're just focusing on the, the critical things that we need to focus on right now. So, um, so without further ado, April Rouse from RMO. Let's get around. <laughs> you in trouble now. <laughs> I didn't realize he had already gone through all of his that quickly. <laughs> Apparently. And I paid him to say all that nice stuff about me. <clears throat> I apologize for my scruffy voice, but um, I thought leaving Ohio, my allergies would get better. Um, but they are getting worse. So this is what I'm stuck with. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> All right. So today, um, as Doug mentioned, we are, um, I'm going to present to you kind of um, just the core basic functionality that is going to be available to you in our new system. Um, the CRM, which is a acronym that you need to get used to hearing because anytime that um, it is referred to in um, BBIS, which is the online access to our customer relationship management system. Um, it's the membership CRM, or just CRM. So um, that is what we're referring to. Um, as Doug said, this is no longer the membership system. This is the donors, donor relations, voluntary services, employment services, membership, um, it's it's the everything system, and so yes. One thing, when you do all this, these <laughs> acronyms for those of us who don't know what they are, at least give it to us one time what they are. Right, the customer relationship management system (CRM). Um, this this allows us to serve you better. If you call up and you talk to somebody in voluntary services now, they will know immediately that you're also a member. They will know if you're a donor. Are you a monthly donor? Have you donated once? Did you do the 5K? Things like that. We will have a more holistic view of you as a person so that we can better serve you in the future. All right. So today we are going to focus on our core principles and that is including how we access the system and basic functionality. <clears throat> um, I'm also at the end gonna give a peek to the additional functionality that will be available in the future. Initially, we will be giving access to department and national leadership only. Um, and then once we kind of use them as user test subjects, for lack of a better word, um, and make sure that we've worked out all the kinks, 
we will then open it up to all members to be able to access the system. And what that means for everyone is that when you log in, you will be able to see your profile, so all of your memberships, whether you have one, whether you have 50, whether you're an auxiliary member or a DUV member or both, that'll all be there. Your service record information will also be there. Um, and you can do things like order a new membership card if you need a new one because you've lost or your card was stolen or it got damaged, things like that. All right, <clears throat> so we're gonna start with logging in. Um, for the department and national leaders, you will be given um, a username and a password to access the CRM. And this is what the screen will look like when you log in. Um, if you are on a shared computer, please do not check the remember login field um, because then if somebody else comes along, they'll be able to get in and they would access your record for themselves. <clears throat> if you cannot remember your password, we have set it up so that you can reset your password yourself, just like all other websites. Yes, you no longer. And the membership specialist and Doug, Doug's team say yay too. Um, you will be able to click on forgot password. And with your email address, which is your login ID, you will be able to go through the steps to reset your password yourself. Once you email, add your email address and click submit, you will receive instructions in an email of how to reset your password yourself. All right, next I'm going to show you an overview of the navigation of the site itself. After you log in, which please note that when you go to DAV.org and go to the members only section of DAV.org, you will still be entering your member number and logging in as you have every day up till today. Then once you're in that area, you will click on the CRM access and use your username and password, your email address and your password to get into the CRM itself. So it is a, a dual login process. Once you log into the main CRM page, you can access all the functions that are in the application. We're going to start with the profile. You will click on the member profile button and you will see here this is an example of a member profile and this is somebody who actually has two different DAV memberships. And I know that you probably can't see it really well on these screens, but each membership is a different color. So the first membership will be white background, the second membership starts with the gray, and then if you had a third, it would be white and then gray again after that. Um, obviously, we picked one that only had two so that you didn't have to scroll. <clears throat> the next button down is the full service record. And this is where you can enter information about where you served, when you served, any awards you may have received, um, and the different things that qualify you to be a DAV member. If you notice that something is missing or is incorrect about your service record, you will have the ability to change it yourself. Um, you can click on add, the add button to add any information that's missing, or the edit button to, ex uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> to edit anything that, ha that exists that is incomplete or wrong. <clears throat> you will have to, for the service record, there are so many different options, different things that you can modify or add. You may have to scroll down to get through all of them, so just be aware of that. Um, if you start updating something and decide that you've made a mistake, you can always hit cancel and it will just go back to the way it was when you clicked in it to begin with. <laughs> For every screen that you go to within the system, there's always at the top a back button 
and that will always take you back to this original CRM screen. The next item is deceasing, the um, deceased record or deceased notification. Um, obviously, this is not going to be <clears throat> your deceased record because, um, <laughs> well, you know, I, maybe I should say, hey, if you are deceased and you want to let us know and you have the ability to log into the internet, go for it. But <laughs> otherwise, um, this is one function that you can perform for somebody else. Um, you click on the notification of deceased and it will ask for certain details. Um, they, we will require you to give us their full name, their membership number, and the deceased date, if you know it. Um, once you click submit, this actually goes into a queue and the membership specialist will will see that record in our in our system and they will go through the necessary steps to verify that the person is indeed deceased and um, mark them as, as so in the system. <clears throat> if you have more than one person that you need to enter as deceased in one day, um, when you go back in, you will actually see the first person that you entered because that doesn't get cleared out until the membership specialist has actually gone in and done their portion of, of the job. Just one second, sir. Um, so if you have an additional person that you need to submit as deceased, you will just need to clear out the fields and then type in the second person's information and hit submit again. Your question? Will this update the local chapters, uh, membership numbers monthly, or is it going to get again on a yearly basis? So, marking someone as deceased will mark them as deceased immediately in our system, but the actual removal of that number of uh, the, it does not change the number of members in your chapter or unit or department until the year in year beginning process is done June 30th and July 1st. Correct. That's good. That's Correct. Good. Correct. Hey, I got that right. <laughs> yes, sir. You said earlier putting in the full name. How sensitive is that? For example, is it Jim or James? So, um, good question. Um, Could you repeat the question, please? The, the question was, how sensitive is the full name field? So Jim, James, Jimmy, John, Jamie. Um, so it is sensitive as far as the more information that we have presented to us in the form that it is in our system, the easier it is for us to match up your submission with an actual record in our CRM system, um, but that is why we also ask for the membership number because your membership number is unique to you whether your name is Jim, Jimmy, James, you know, whatever. So um, it's it's just added, it's added protection that we know that we're deceasing the correct person. Um, and so obviously last name in that situation is, is more important than the first name. Um, but the other thing is, um, we do have a lot of situations um, where we have Jim, Jim the second, Jim the third, Jim junior, Jim senior, all in the same household. <clears throat> so um, if you know that a person is a senior, a third, a junior, a second, a 19th, whatever, um, please add that into the full name also. Just because, once again, it makes sure that we are attaching that notification to the correct member. Yes? It does record the person. So what happens is 
This actually records, because you're logged in as you, it records that April, notify DAB that Doug has passed away. Let's have a moment of silence. I'm the big brother she wished would ever have. <laughs> So the question is, is if um, National will call the person who's made the notification. Yes, we have several different ways that we verify that a person is truly deceased. Um, so we we don't just we don't just um, automatically process somebody just because somebody says that they're deceased. We, we look at record, government records and things like that. So we do make verification and if we have to contact the person who made the notification, we will. Hey, yes? The old system, the only people that actually had access to chapters, commanders and actions. Everybody has access now, it's not just officers. So anybody can go into this system and can say somebody can see it. Anybody can go into the system, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean that we are not doing our jobs at headquarters. We still verify before it's actually officially marked that way in our system. So any member of any chapter of any department can go in and look at population summary improvements and everything else? No. Okay. I will get to that. Okay. We're just talking about deceasing at this time. Deceasing. I could go in and decease anybody in this room today if I really wanted to, but our membership, yes, it is a threat. Just for you, though. No line officer dinner ticket for you. Um, but like I said, the membership specialists have a protocol that they follow because, once again, this is not just the membership system. This is the voluntary system, voluntary services system. This is the fundraising system. This is employment services system. So we have to be very careful that changes that we make in the system are correct and the data is good so that we don't affect other departments in the DAV also. Yes, sir. Okay, we just went through our complete membership and found 170 names. I am not gonna put 170 names in there. Can I send you a spreadsheet with all that information? Yes. Yes, sir, you can. The question was if if I just went through my chapter or department's information and identified a large number of people that should have been deceased, can I send a spreadsheet to the headquarters? Yes. What do you need on this? Except for this gentleman up here that's been, you know, mean to me. He would have to enter all 170 of them, plus your 170. Let's let him look through a few of these five questions. We're okay. We have plenty of time for questions. I promise. Plus, we're going to be available. We're going to we're going to take more questions on a little bit. So remember your question. All right. Um, once you've hit submit, you'll you'll get this notification, and this means that the message has been sent to the membership specialist to get that processed. All right, membership transfer. Um, this is a DAV specific thing, not an auxiliary thing, so I'm not sure if we have auxiliary members in here right now. Um, their membership transfer process is different, so plug your ears if you're auxiliary. Um, for DAV, this process hasn't changed. This link will take you to the form that you know and love today. And the process still hasn't changed also where you can either um, enter the information in to the website and then print it off to get the signatures and mail it in, or you print it off, you handwrite everything in and mail it in. But the bottom line is, is this still needs a ink signature and physically mailed into headquarters. <coughs> Or scan it and email it. Sorry, I didn't realize that part. We like scanning an email a lot better. Save postage, save trees, save everything. And that too. All right, next. Change your username and password. 
Um, this is, once you've logged in, if you decide that you don't like the username and password that you currently have, you can change it. Please know that um, because of the forgot your password process, we suggest that your username is the email address that you have set up. Um, it just makes the process more streamlined. If you call the membership department, they are not able to reset your password. So you have to go through this process to get it done. Excuse me, on passwords, are they required to be updated periodically? Do you need to change passwords every three months or something? That is an excellent question that I cannot answer. I do not know if you have to reset your password or not. Um, in the CRM system itself, it's every 90 days. Um, but I don't know. We will get you an answer. Thank yes. you, Doug. All right, type in the username, the current username and password, and then your new username and password. The passwords do have to be eight or more characters. Um, and then click submit, and you'll get this nice little, thank you, you're wonderful. Here's your new password. All right, <clears throat> another great thing is you will be able to see your due statements. So this is an example of someone who has three different memberships, one in Kentucky, one in Florida, and one in Virginia. And um, it shows, I believe that, yeah, on the bottom, the total that they owe is zero because they're all paid off, they're all full life. Um, we have a couple new verbs and now, nouns associated with this system. The first is pledge. The word pledge means membership. So it's just the way that the CRM system works. So for example, if you were to want to become a new member today of Kentucky Chapter 19, your pledge would be for, how much is a full life? $300. $300. The prize goes to Doug. So your pledge is $300. And say you sign up with your $10 deposit, so your pledge amount due is $290. That pledge amount goes down each time you make a payment until it's zero. Pledge payment means due statement. Um, so if you make a payment toward a pledge, like I said, it, it's just like you're making your dues. Designation is just another word for department. Department. All right, once again, you hit the back button, it goes back to the original <coughs> screen. What is donation? <coughs> that shouldn't say donation, <laughs> and it won't say donation, it'll say membership total. I, I'm sorry, we missed that when we took the screenshot. Good catch, you get a prize. High five. <laughs> All right, um, in this next example, I'm going to show you one that has a remaining balance. So this is actually, um, we're going to show a auxiliary membership this time. Um, as you can see, if you log in as an auxiliary member, you have a few less buttons, and that's just because, for example, they don't do the transfers the same way as VAB. So if I go into this payment history, um, you can see that there is a, an amount due for this person, and I could make a payment on this right from here. So I would click pay, which is up at the top, and I would put in my membership payment amount, and I would then verify that my billing information is correct, and click pay now, and then I would make my payment. <clears throat> and um, these payments are processed the exact same way that payments are processed if you go into the new member forms that are also located on BBIS, this same tool. All right, and then once you make the membership payment, you can hit the back button once again and go back to the main screen. 
The final function that will be available as soon as you have access, you've been given your access to the system, is the membership card request. Um, this is, once again, <coughs> for you and you only because you're the person that's logged in, the member. Um, so if I needed a new card, I would go to request a new card. I would enter my membership number. This is very important because I know that many of you have several different memberships across the United States. And so we need to know which card you need reprinted. And we also need to know why you need it reprinted. Um, the correct answers are stolen, lost, or damaged. If you are a new member and you're waiting for your new membership card to come in, this is not where you would go to request that card. We know that you're a new member and we are gonna get your card to you. Um, <clears throat> so this just kind of slows down the process if you try to do that. <clears throat> now, one thing that you've got to understand is that when you put this information in here, it goes into a batch for the membership specialist to process, much like the deceasing records. The membership specialist will go in and make sure that you've entered your membership number correctly and that they know which card is getting ordered. And then it will be put into a queue that gets sent to the printer once a week. Once a week. So. I'm not sure what day of the week it goes, but let's just say we send the file to the vendor on Monday and you request a new card on Tuesday. That means that your request, we have it, but it won't go to the vendor until the following Monday. So there is some turnaround time. This is not something that will, it's not a you put in the request and we put it in the mail that afternoon. So I just want to level set people's expectations that we have your information, we're getting it processed, but it's not an immediate thing. Yes? Um, the question is, is if people request a card but they don't know their number, are they because, because they're new members? <coughs> Um, so uh, let's just say for now they can call the membership specialist and get that number for them. But in the future, um, once all the functionality is available to the member leaders, their chapter commander can look them up and get that information for them. <clears throat> We have, yes, we have plans for a name search capability, but until we can ensure that we've got the security set up properly so that chapters can only see their chapter names and that departments can only see their department names, we will not be releasing that functionality. Yes. All right. So, yes. You went through the process. I'm logged in, I can order myself a new card. How about if I need to order a card for another member? Okay, if you need to order a card for another member, they need to log in and order it for themselves. There is no functionality right now for you to be able to order cards for other people. That is a future thing. When you say when you say department and chapter leadership, do you, do you include the adjutants who are most likely going to be doing this, or is it just the, the commands right now? So we have different roles that we will have set up. Um, for example, treasurers will have access to the annual financial report. And adjutants will have access to the things that is necessary for them to have access to and appropriate. And the commanders will have access to whatever is appropriate for their level. So it, it will just depend on the roles. And Doug's team is, Doug's the one that's setting those up. My team is in charge of the system and maintaining the security, but <clears throat> this is something that, you know, Doug, Doug defines it for us and we implement it. <clears throat> yes? 
Uh, what if a member does not have an email address? We have a lot of uh, senior people that sign up for membership, but they don't have an email address at all. So those people that don't have an email address will still have to do things old school, and that is calling the membership department because anything that you can do through BBIS, the membership specialist can do with a phone call. So um, for example, right now nobody has access to reports, but the reports exist, and if you need a report, you can contact the membership specialist and they can email the report or mail the report to you that day. So um, we're not saying that you won't have access, but you just won't have access immediately like others. <clears throat> Let me get through the rest of my slides real quick and then I'll take all your questions. Okay, so when we give the initial department leaders and national leaders access, we will be providing those people with their login IDs and their passwords. Um, I believe, are we sending it out on Monday? Yes, on Monday, all department commanders, adjutants, and people, just, just commanders and adjutants, 104 people are gonna get an email that says, hey, welcome to the membership BBIS system. Here's your login ID and here's your password. Those people will then be able to go to the login. In the future, when we send out a memo saying, hey, we're gonna let all members access their information in BBIS, you will be going out and you will click on this button that says request new user ID. You will enter the user ID that you want to use and the password that you want to use along with your name and some other information like first name, last name, member number, state, <laughs> things like that. And your request will be put into a queue so that the membership specialist can attach your login with your record. Until that attachment happens, you will not have access to the system. Um, so, <clears throat> it, once again, level setting expectations. When you click the button to say submit, you're not immediately going to have access. It might take 24 or 48 hours to get that, that connection process done, and you will be notified that you have access then. And then once you submit that, it'll tell you that it's been submitted. Once you get this thank you for registering screen, you will know that the membership specialists have gotten your information. Some of the other things that are coming in the future, as Doug mentioned, um, we will, <clears throat> as soon as the functionality is available, we will start only taking officer reports online. Everything, no more paper. The annual financial report, once the functionality is available, will be online only. No more paper. So, just be aware um, that these things are coming, changes are coming, technology is awesome, change is good, and we're all excited about it. All right, questions? Oh, okay. So, yeah, like Stealing I said, my thunder. Big Brother, um, just a couple of things I, I wanted to clarify, um, just ideas that I had. So, they are working their butts off to get these security issues squared away and all that good stuff. As you mentioned, we don't want the commander for Chapter 19 in Kentucky to have access to the roles in Chapter 114 in Livonia, Michigan, right? So, that is, you know, very important that we get that stuff squared away. To those 104 officers that are going to get that access next Monday. Feel free to go in and poke around a little bit, but remember, I don't get back to the house until next week. So uh, please do not kill my membership specialist because they are not as up to speed on this stuff yet, right? It's just been absolutely insane for us lately with respect to the, the implementation of CRM. We just moved to our brand new headquarters. Uh, the, all the work we did for the pivot from Reno to Tampa, so all that stuff. So, 
please continue to bear with us on that. Um, those cues that April mentioned, that everything is gonna go into, that's part of that whole security protocol, right, and to make sure that we're validating everything. So you're gonna see an awful lot of that, whether it's, you know, the CC notifications or uh, new membership cards, whatever it is, that's all part of that important uh, quality assurance process. So, um, but the biggest thing that, before we get into questions, that I wanna make sure I mention everybody, is be excited about this. This is not a finished product that you're being presented with today. We are gonna be working on this, putting gold plating on this for probably the next, the next couple few years, I guess. Um, you know, remember, we made refinements to the membership system for 25 years. We were making changes to it, what, three years ago? Improvements, you know, I mean, it's a, you know, that was a, a three decade old platform that we were working on. So this is not a finished product. Be excited about this. this. The, the information and the capabilities that you as, as chapter and department officers, ultimately when you all get your access, that you're gonna have at your fingertips is nothing compared to what you're gonna have a year round the road, okay? So this is, you know, we're gonna roll this stuff out incrementally, make sure things work as they progress, uh, and we'll get more and more of that gold plating. My goal is to have the chapter treasurer sitting in his recliner on a Sunday afternoon while he's watching the football game doing uh, his finance report, right? That, that's what we wanna do from a pad or something. So that's the goal. Uh, and April mentioned reports again. I, I think we're quality assuring a couple of components, but we can get you anything that you need just about right now. Uh, if we can't, we'll let you know, but you can call back to the house uh, at headquarters and then get you whatever you need between now and then. Once I'm sure that all those reports are good to go from top to bottom, I'm just gonna do a mass email blast out to all the departments, let them know that they're available and just sharing the reports with them as they send right then, okay? Uh, that was my promise at Q&A, and I'll keep that promise right now as soon as I'm sure they're good to go.